Okay, so recently I did this 64-bit RetroPie video. Uh, it was a build that Munker had sent me, and it included GameCube and Wii, and I was really impressed to see it running within RetroPie. In the comments, uh, I had a suggestion from Ruben Chavez. Unfortunately, it got deleted uh, because it had a link in it, but Lacquer now supports Dolphin 64-bits with Vulcan on Pi 4. It will be worth trying. So let's have a look at that link. So it takes you to here. Uh, so you can see that it's using the latest version of RetroArch uh, 1.9.4 and if we scroll down uh, there's a few fixes as well, fixed audio issues on Raspberry Pi 4, fixed full motion video issues with PPSSPP, Misa has been updated to 21.1.1 and Vulkan is enabled in Dolphin and PPSSPP on the Raspberry Pi 4 and if you've got a Nintendo Switch it's enabled on that as well. So you can see here uh, there's an official link to the Lacquer download page, but I went for the nightly build, so if I click on that uh, and scroll down, there's two versions here, there's an RPI4 for 64-bit and there's also a 32-bit, so I downloaded the 64-bit version which is this one, and I downloaded the image.gz, which you can see is 470 megabytes. Okay, so that's just finished downloading, uh, so if I minimize that, uh, I can open Raspberry Pi Imager and I've got a 32 gig micro SD card in my Pi so if I do choose OS and custom and then find the one I've just downloaded which was this one Lacquer RPI4 Arch64 hit open choose my storage device so you can see here it's this one and then I would hit write I'm not going to hit write because I've already done it so that's written to my SD card, uh, and let's go for a nice big overclock. I'm going to use the settings I used in my recent Pi News, Pi News 31, uh, which was the 2350 overclock. So let's open this up. Uh, I guess it's in this one, the config.txt. No, probably the other one then. So config.txt. Let's find the settings. So I've added in these four lines, so ARM frequency 2350, GPU frequency 850, over voltage equals 15, boot delay equals 1, and uh, force turbo I need to change to 1, so let's save that. And my ROMs are on this USB stick, this is one that I use uh, for loads of different builds, Batasera, Recall Box, all sorts of things. So in the RetroPie mount folder, we have a ROMs folder, and I've got all sorts of things in here. I put some more GameCube games in here, uh, and also uh, played around with uh, PSP Mini I like, uh, and so there's a few games that I've put in there, although it doesn't seem to recognize it in the same way, but I'll show that in a minute. And I was going to add another ROM to the USB stick, which is on this physical hard drive, but I'm going to have to... Um, yeah, I want to use this a bit differently, so I'm going to I'm going to boot from a micro SD card because these take quite a lot of power from a Pi, and I'm going to be plugging in two USB storage devices, so it's probably safer to just do it that way. So I'm going to shut this down, and we're going to boot up Raspberry Pi OS from an SD card. This one will do. So I'm going to unplug my uh, SSD drive, which I was running Twister OS from. Pop my SD card in. Take this one out for now because it's got an operating system on it. In fact, take this one out, which has got the ROMs on it uh, for now. So I'm just gonna boot up with Raspberry Pi OS first off. And then I'm gonna plug this in when it's booted up because they do use a reasonable amount of power. And I often plug it into um, USB 2 just because uh, I'm not worried about the file speeds, but it tends to use less power. So we'll just let that boot up from an SD card. I've had this recently where my display doesn't work sometimes when it boots and if you unplug the HDMI and plug it back in again, it does. And I don't know if that boot delay maybe would help that. Anyway, uh, so 500 gig uh, standard HD drive. And you can possibly hear it spin up. 
so it's recognized that and I'm going to plug in this is uh, an SD card reader and I've got a 32 gig micro SD card which has got lacquer on it the one that I've just overclocked so let's get rid of all these uh, and go into file manager and this is my 500 gig hard drive confusingly named SD card but that's because I formatted it with Raspberry Pi imager so uh, RetroPie mount let's see if I can find a ROM that I was looking for it's actually an arcade one and this takes a while because uh, it's a physical drive so it has to spin up so I guess it's just in the arcade folder and here it is bullfight.zip so let's copy that and uh, I'm going to put that on oh, actually I haven't plugged it, I plugged in the wrong drive so I'm going to put it on the desktop for now there we go, uh, so there's bullfight.zip uh, now I need to eject some of the other drives so let's eject my uh, physical drive and I might as well eject lacquer because that doesn't need to be in there at the moment and let's pop in my 128 gig USB which is the one that's going to hold the ROMs so we can open that and uh, let's navigate to where all the arcade ROMs are so retropy mount ROMs arcade and I'll copy and paste it into that folder. So copy, edit, paste, and there it is. Right, so now we can shut down and restart with lacquer. Okay, so it's a good start. So it started up with the 2350 overclock. Um, the first thing you need to do is to show it where the ROMs are. Now I've already done it, so you can see that various different systems are showing here, uh, all sorts of things. But if I go back over to the left hand side, uh, go to plus and scan directory. So the only one I've got that's different is that arcade ROM I've just added. So I can navigate to that. Uh, so retropy mount. But you, if you were doing this for the first time and you had a load of ROMs in here, you could scan this directory, so the ROMs directory, and then it's going to pick up everything that's there. But that does take quite some time, depending on how much you've got there. But you can see here, this is the one uh, that would have had uh, that bullfight in it. So I'm going to scan this directory. So retropy mount ROMs arcade. And we might see it down the bottom left hand. Although there are other things in there. Yeah, I did see it there flash up very, very quickly. Okay, so scanning of directory finished. So now if we go back by pressing the A button. And then if we find arcade on here. So it's not showing up at the moment. You can see some things are. Uh, so we've got Punch Out is showing up, Maven 2003, uh, but it's not showing that bullfight game. So let's do load content, start directory. There's my USB stick. So retropy mount and ROMs, arcade. So there's bullfight. Now it might work straight off. Uh, so it's gonna so because it's arcade, there's loads of options. I'm gonna go with MAME 2003. I'm not sure which one it's supposed to be, but I'm just gonna go with that one as a start. Okay, so let's insert a coin. Usually select inserts a coin. Yeah, one player start. Arcade games just have a great sound and a feel to them. Uh, now, I don't really know this game very well. I'm trying to think what. Oh, <laughs> nice start. Oh, I'm doing better now. I think you have to wait for it to get tired. I don't know. Crikey, it's hard to <laughs> keep close to it. Oh, that didn't work so well. Oh, I've got me got me sword back. Oh, <laughs> it's quite difficult actually. But then arcade game, a lot of arcade games were very difficult. Well, that's probably a fair result. Right, so let's try something else. So start, select, and the home button gets you out to this menu, and I can do close content. Uh, I can launch games directly. So if I go to something like, say, a DOS game and the Incredible Machine. 
Actually, another game I don't really know how to play, The Incredible Machine, but you'll get the idea of it. Um, so back to mouse and keyboard because this is a DOS game, so an old PC game. But you can see I haven't done any configuration, everything just works. So you can see here, look, make the basketball go through the hoop. So we've got gravity is on. Freeform machine. I probably should watch a tutorial on this. Uh, so I've got a mouse wheel, which I guess would drive these. And how many? I've got three of these as well. Oh yeah, that works. Uh, and then we've got these um, slopes here, which I guess I'm probably going to need two of those. But I don't know if that's it. Uh, obviously, if you know the game, you'll know exactly how to do it. Or I could just watch a video and see how. But I d as I say, I don't know if that drives that, if they're linked in any way. And obviously, why are these balls here? So gravity turns on. Well, let's just hit start. Okay, well that was fairly uneventful, but good to see a DOS game working. So let's quit out of that. I know it's got very good ratings that game, so I do mean to have a look at it at some other point. So I figured I'd try Animal Crossing, uh, which is the GameCube version I think this was. Uh, I haven't tried this before, I haven't played Animal Crossing, I know it's very popular. Um, and uh, I just figured it would be the sort of game that maybe, even if performance is suffering, it would still be probably all right to play because I get I get the impression it's quite a relaxing game to play, although it doesn't look like it's launching. Now I've restarted it because uh, I found this um, where some of the GameCube games weren't launching and it was down to the Vulcan driver uh, in my instance. So if I go to video, you can see it's on Vulcan. If I put it on GL, uh, I'm pretty sure the same game will launch. And you can get these, see it's got recent here. These are the two games I've played recently. So if I click on Animal Crossing USA, and run, fingers crossed. Yeah, it's launching. I'd have the music slower than usual. So got a little bit of distortion to it. Mm, all these menus seem all right. The music sounds all right in the background. I'm ready to go. <laughs> so if I want a house, I've got to stand outside and press the A button. I don't know how, if you know this game, you'll know how fast this bit would normally run. Uh, oh, I can actually, oh, I can run anyway. Okay, so I'll try something else, but yeah, that does, uh, it, for this sort of game, I would think it would be absolutely fine. So let's try something a bit more taxing. So let's try a bit of Smuggler's Run and see how well that runs. Okay, so the audio has been fine, but as soon as you launch the game, uh, it goes a bit scratchy. I'll resume game. So let's see what the overall gameplay is like. So it looks pretty decent, but it is a bit slow. You could hear on the voice then uh, that it's pretty slow. Just needs a bit more work. Uh, shame the Vulcan wasn't working for me, although I, d I think I did have it working before. Right, so let's quit out of that. And uh, I'm gonna go back to the main menu and I'm gonna turn on Vulcan and I'm gonna try PPSSPP. Uh, so video and Vulcan. So let's try a bit of this motocross versus ATV. So didn't like that. Oh, I don't know if my Vulcan, I, my Vulcan was working, so I might need to re-install uh, this. Let's try that, GL, and let's try it again. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work with the Vulcan, but I think I might try reinstalling it because I was playing around with settings. I didn't necessarily find the Vulcan was better than the OpenGL. Now I put this on two times uh, resolution, which sometimes on PPSSPP really affects the performance, but I found on this game, it was pretty good and uh, overall pretty smooth, although the controls are a bit full on on this. Well, that's better. It's better with the analog stick. Digital stick's really jerky. So yeah, sounds perfect. PSP is a, is a great one uh, for the Raspberry Pi. It's always been really good, but it's nice to see it at two times, but running nice and smoothly. Right, so let's quit out of that. And uh, I wanted to show uh, Dreamcast, because the Dreamcast emulator, I've had a look through, and it looks like ReDream is no longer in RetroArch or Lacquer. It is in lots of RetroPie builds, so you can still get it on the Pi, and I've got loads of videos showing Dreamcast. Um, but if we go to, uh, here it is, and 
What I have found though is it's played and that it's launched and played some games that I couldn't get to play with ReDream. So Sega Rally 2, which I can't get to run with ReDream at all, runs on this. Not great, uh, and I have put the resolution down to a lower resolution. I think this is on 320. I might switch it back. Now I'm overclocking much higher. But generally the ReDream one, when it comes up with that powered by CE, Windows CE, they tend not to work. So there's quite a few games that don't run with ReDream, but the ones that do, ReDream has excellent performance. Okay, so the audio is pretty bad on the menus. Well, I've seen slower, but um, but yeah, pretty slow. <laughs> Not a great frame rate on that, so let's quit out of that. And let's try something that I know will be fine on, uh, which will be PlayStation 1. And we've got a few here. The Beetle one, um, I haven't tried much. I've tried PCSX quite a bit, so let's try Beetle and see how that runs. I haven't done anything with, uh, with BIOS files. Ah, uh, okay. So let's go back. So I haven't put any BIOS files in. So let's close that one. Set core association. So let's try it with the other one, PCSX, and run. I haven't put any of the BIOS files in the right place. PCSX has found there's no BIOS file, but it lets you play anyway. Okay, so, oh yeah, the speed's fine on this, it looks like. Do a few of these challenges. Yeah, running nicely. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That's exactly as I would expect it to be. So let's try something else. So I talked about PSP mini games earlier on, and uh, you can see here these are all standard PSP games. Uh, if I go back to the very beginning, uh, we can open content and we can find all those PSP mini games. There's probably a way of putting them in here. Uh, I haven't really looked into it. Load content. Uh, go to my stick and retropy mount and ROMs and PSP. They were in a PSP mini folder, but I moved them over to PSP. PSP. And uh, say, for instance, something like 4x4 Jam. There you go. So you can see that that looks pretty decent and uh, the speed feels absolutely fine. And the graphics look pretty decent on two times. I don't know what other PSP mini games I've got. So I don't know what Days of Thunder is as uh, a PSP mini game. So can you get into first place, first rival? This actually handles all right, really. It's not got any slide to it, um, but it's but it's quite enjoyable to play because it is quite quite fast. I'm in first place, not for long probably. Oh yeah, he's back in. Try a bit of Toy Story on the N64 and see how well that runs. You can see we've got two N64s here. I'm going to go with the Moopin 64 Plus. Just give that a try. Yeah, I would say this runs at a pretty decent speed. Okay, so let me know in the comments if you've had any games working particularly well on this build or if you've had any settings that work for you. But I've been using this on a passively cooled Pi at 2350 and it seems to be coping with it pretty well. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.